Welcome back to Close Up. Well, we were here in Washington before all of the drama at the DNC meeting. We went to Capitol Hill to catch up with Senators Gene Shaheen and Maggie Hassan about the impact of the November election and issues they see as important heading into 2023. Senator, thank you for hosting us here in your D.C. office. We appreciate you making time for us here. Oh, it's great to have you. So this is the first time we've talked to you since earlier this month. Uh, what, what do you think the message was that voters were sending on Election Day? Look, I think people want us to listen to them and deliver on the priorities that are important to them. Uh, so when I've talked with Granite Staters, uh, they've wanted to make sure that we are coming together, uh, working together to address everything from inflation and particularly high uh, home heating costs and energy costs, uh, to also making sure uh, that we are protecting individual rights and protecting our democracy. Because of course, the key here is when you have a democracy that's functioning, you can actually make sure that your elected officials that are delivering for you, and that was a major part of the message from voters. What about abortion access? Clearly this was something that was very important to New Hampshire voters, and they're worried about it, but some, that might be something that can't be acted upon for a while. Well, we continue uh, to advocate for um, the Women's Health Protection Act, something I'm a co-sponsor of, uh, but at the end of the day, New Hampshire voters made very, very clear uh, that they believe that women are capable of making uh, critical health decisions and life decisions on their own uh, in consultation with their doctors, and that's the way it should be. And I'll continue uh, to push both at the federal level uh, and where appropriate at the state level too, to ensure that uh, we are respecting women's individual freedom. Uh, that was a really important uh, issue, not only for the women we talked to uh, door to door and uh, all over the state, but for men too. This rail strike that's being averted, do you think the workers in this are getting a fair shake? Uh, look, it's really important for our economy, for our safety, that we keep freight rail, freight rail service going. Uh, freight rail service is essential, uh, for instance, in keeping our supply chains moving. So I think it's very important, and there's bipartisan agreement, uh, that we pass this law to make sure that the rail doesn't shut down. Uh, it's also really important, and I support efforts to make sure that the workers get paid sick leave, uh, because that's at, at the heart of some of this dispute. We know that innovation is big for you. You've got a big uh, conference coming up. Uh, and tell us about that and how the Chips and Science Act, when will we start that really to see that really come to bear uh, on the economy? Well, so um, I am hosting uh, on Monday my fifth annual innovation summit in New Hampshire and invite people to go to our website, uh, hassan.senate.gov, to find out more about how they can join that. We will have uh, representatives from the Small Business Administration, uh, industry representatives from New Hampshire, including a uh, representative from our new BioFab cluster in uh, Manchester. Um, but th at the end of the day, this is about what we can continue to do to invest in research and development in New Hampshire, support entrepreneurs, and um, we'll be talking about the Chips and Science Act, among other things. Um, uh, as a way of helping uh, support more and more research and development and innovation in New Hampshire. We're already seeing some businesses hiring up because of the Chips and Science Act, and I think you will continue to see increased investment uh, in innovation in New Hampshire as a result. Senator Hassan, thanks for hosting us, and thanks for your time. Thanks so much. Senator Shaheen, thank you for hosting us here in the nation's capital. Nice to have you here. All right. It's a nice reversal for once, I guess. So uh, what was your read on uh, how the voters spoke uh, earlier this uh, in November, I guess I should say, uh, on the election? Well, obviously, I was very pleased with the outcome in New Hampshire, where we reelected our con congressional delegation, Senator Hassan, Congressman Pappas, uh, Congresswoman Custer, um, and by the margins that they got elected, and by the voters, not just in New Hampshire, but in virtually every race ac across the country, saying, we are not going to elect election deniers who don't understand that our democracy is about ensuring that there is a peaceful transition of power after elections. So I thought that was very encouraging. You mentioned that uh, unease that some voters had with certain candidates. Uh, I can borrow a quote from Governor Sununu who said, there are big problems that we have, but it seems like he was, he said, and these are his words, he said, we need to quote, fix crazy first. How bad is the problem of extremism right now and what needs to change? Well. Fortunately, it's not the majority, um, but we know we have extreme and that that has been exacerbated by some of the leaders in particularly during President Trump's tenure. And we saw that on January 6th when there was a, an effort to overthrow uh, the duly elected government. So 
we do need to encourage leaders and ex we should expect our leaders to be respectful, to understand what democracy is all about, and to be willing to listen to other points of view. We can, we can listen without agreeing. We can try and find some common ground. Um, we don't have to um, think that the only answer to somebody who disagrees with us is to um, get angry, um, go after them personally, use hate speech. That's that's not the basis on which our democracy was built. Uh, speaking of Governor Sununu, there's been a spirited debate uh, between your office and his office over the emergency rental assistance and what happened to this housing funding. What is your side of this story uh, of why this money was not renewed? Well, Adam, it's not my side, it's the facts. Um, the facts are that we passed um, a package of assistance for renters uh, in December of 2020 um, in an effort to try and help people who were still being affected by COVID. Um, there was a deadline on when that money was gonna expire. That was known from the beginning and the state of New Hampshire didn't get the money out. I mean, they just basically didn't get it done. And so about 18 million of that got recouped. And I think we've still got people who are really hurting in New Hampshire, um, especially now with the increase in um, inflation, with high energy costs, and we should make sure that we've got as much help for them as we can provide. And housing is a particular problem, as we know, for people around the state. So to, to be able to, to not use that money effectively and to have it recouped is just not something that should be acceptable right now. The voters shouldn't accept that. Are you saying there was mismanagement on the state level? I, I don't think there was deliberate mismanagement. I think there was um, incompetence in not getting the funding out. And it wasn't, it wasn't the CAP agencies because they did a very good job, but they were, um, their hands were tied in terms of the number of people they could hire and the ability to get that program up and running. Senator Sheen, thank you for your time and nice for hosting us here in the Capitol.